Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on March 11th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving your world update, looking at our sun, earthquakes, and as well, world, world weather. Starting out here, looking at the last 48 hours on our sun. Earlier today, I showed you some pretty amazing imagery, large plasma filaments slapping back into the sun creating a large solar tsunami but then look at that bottom right hand corner that's right that other plasma filament let go the other way so having a look here the last 48 hours incoming we do have a pretty bright and active sunspot region turning in right hand side as well that large plasma filament stretching from the surface still starting to come down a little bit and then looking at outgoing here this is where we saw the plasma filament take off did create a CME, but nothing major right after the solar tsunami with that plasma filament. Another close look here at the southern hemisphere of our sun. Active earth facing sunspots, plasma filaments, and of course the solar tsunami and this large plasma whip that just left the southeast region of our sun. Looking at multi-spectrum here, we can see all of the events the last 48 hours. You can see plasma filaments, sunspots, and two of the plasma filaments that we've been watching this week have already done their business. And now we're looking at a couple more developing the equatorial region of our SAR. Solar Cycle 25 is definitely putting on a show. And we do have a coronal hole that is developing, equatorial region. Getting ready for an Earth-facing view. And we have some incoming space weather from all of the most recent events here. Having a look at space weather conditions, they do remain low. Solar X-ray flux, looking at a couple downward spikes there. Remaining in sea range, geomagnetic activity sitting at KP2. Real-time solar wind sitting at 383 kilometers per second after being up over 430 earlier today and overnight. Expecting things to change here right up into the 13th and 14th. This is the ISPA space prediction spiral from the latest CME flare that we produced yesterday. And then we have another one kind of in the solar stream that is already on its way to Earth for the 13th and into the 14th. This is the space prediction spiral for NOAA. Showing the most recent CME heading towards Earth. Expecting impact date 13th into the 14th and 15th of March. Quite a big storm developing here. Stay tuned for the world weather forecast coming up here after earthquakes. Big winter storm developing for springtime right around the first day of spring for North America. Having a look at Lasco 2 showing the last 48 hours of events. Looking at Mercury coming in on the right hand side. And then watching in the last couple frames here from the most recent plasma filament leaving the sun we do have a little bit of activity there before the next images come through we got mercury and there is the new cme schumann resonance for today is a power of 12 healthy low power a quick look at the telemetry here power of 12 quality 10.8 and frequency max of 8.2 Let's have a look at earthquakes for the past 24 hours as we're still up over 350 earthquakes according to usgs still looking at an earthquake swarm through alaska we're going to start out here with the largest through the regions 5.5 there fiji and as well a 5.0 south of there fiji islands 498 kilometer depth as well pretty deep earthquake here in the Celebs, 
Celebus City C, South of Philippines. 5.3 earthquake here in Singil, Indonesia. Definitely watching for some Krakatoa activity as it was updated yesterday. 4.6 there, Marianas Trench. 5.2 Japan Islands. 4.0 magnitude there in North Japan. And then we get to Adak, Alaska. Largest through the region being a 4.6. This is still the Tanaga Volcano. That is seeing a large earthquake swarm as shared yesterday. Probably about 3,000 earthquakes recorded yesterday. So 3,200 reported today. 126 new earthquakes through the region, according to USGS. And as well, the Alaska Volcano Observatory. Closer look at where all these earthquakes are occurring. Orange ones being the most recent. This is the last three days and four days with the white earthquakes. Looking at USGS, 328 earthquakes in the map area. Overlooking California, no new major swarms to talk about or peculiar activity. Largest of the region being a 2.5. Quick glance overlooking Canada as we do still have some minor activity all up the coast from the Juan de Fuca northward to the Yukon territories, Northwest territories. Reno, Alberta reporting a 3.4 yesterday, March 10th. As well, Fort St. John still seeing minor activity there. Heads up, stay aware and prepared. Overlooking Hawaii, things are increasing there. 3.4 magnitude earthquake, largest through the region today. And as I said and noted here with USGS, pretty quiet across the North American plate. Central America here, Colombia 4.9. Central regions, Dominican Republic reporting a 4.0 magnitude, 146 kilometer depth. And then South American plate, it was really quiet here yesterday. Increasing activity here through Southern Chile, West Chile rise, and as well, Southern Peru. 4.8 there, Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Overlooking Europe, 4.1 here reported in Romania as well a 4.3 Turkey, 4.7 here, Afghanistan. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Quick browse at the last seven days as we've seen some pretty deep earthquakes recently and not really any large magnitudes to come. Expecting something big here as it just keeps rumbling through the Aleutian Islands and up into Alaska, some pretty big systems coming. You'll see here with the wind models. A lot of deep earthquakes through Afghanistan and as well through the Mediterranean. A little bit concerning. Stay tuned to the volcanic activity report as that will be coming tomorrow. Give you a full update on the SO2 models around the world as well. Air quality report. Watch out Central America and up into the Cascades and maybe even Alaska for the next large earthquake. Heads up everybody. Having a look here, windy models showing the Atlantic Ocean as we have some pretty vigorous and large systems here developing, heading towards the United Kingdom for Sunday into Monday. This large system off the coast of the United States develops, bringing blizzard-like conditions to the Atlantic provinces, but very strong winds here coming up into the United Kingdom in parts of Western Europe, into France, and then we'll be heading through the Mediterranean. These lows will be breaking up. And then long range forecast, it just, they keep getting bigger. These models here are brought to you by windy.com. Watch for these two systems to affect Atlantic Canada. And as well, look at the huge systems developing over Russia. One, two, three, four, and they seem to just get bigger by the time you get to Russia. 
maintaining that velocity in the center of the low through parts of northern Russia in the long-range forecast here. Could see some pretty intense weather across the northern hemisphere over the next little while. Quick glance here at the Pacific Ocean. Showing the next seven days for low pressure systems. Watch for a pretty tightly whipped system come into California and Washington. And then long range forecast, pretty big system developing for northern BC and Alaska. Long range forecast, huge low pressure system forming through the Bering Strait just east of Kamchatka. Quick look here at weather systems. As we do have an Alberta Clipper coming into Ontario Sunday and Monday bringing snow. And then atmospheric river continues to pound California and northward towards Alaska. Long range forecast. Those systems finally start going northward. And then we get some more cold temperatures coming in from the polar vortex. Which might not be settling down for quite some time. Spring is definitely not around the corner. Let's have a look here at upper level winds. This is where we can see the polar vortex and it is split right now as we have two low pressure centers in the northern hemisphere. Having a look at the equatorial regions as we're starting to see that slowly move northward coming into winter. Looks like a Pretty happy frog here. Big old smiley face with these upper level winds. But I've been showing you recently, something has changed. Something has changed with our upper atmosphere and our magnetic field, because that all relates to where our equatorial region winds are. Having a look at last year, equatorial winds overlooking the Atlantic compared to this year. I can see the difference. Can you see a difference? Very big difference here between last year and this year at this time. Let's even go back to 2015. When we had the highest amount of Category 5 hurricanes spinning through the Atlantic, that's what our upper level winds looked like. This is what they look like now at this time. Some very big changes happening on our planet, and I do believe it has a lot to do with the solar cycles that are affecting every planet in its solar system, in our solar system. Quite possibly getting ready for a magnetic reversal on both our star and every planet that is in the solar system. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily too. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.